G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews for the Not So Weekly Weekly News. The first Not So Weekly Weekly News of the reboot. And where was I last week? Well, I still had my cold and I've still got my cold. Seven weeks? Seven weeks with a cold? Is that a world record? Should I be calling the Guinness people? I don't know, but I've had several colds over a period of now nearly seven weeks. Honestly, it's so frustrating. But enough of that. On with the weekly news. And this time it will be weekly, not so not weekly, but weekly. Right, first of all, uh, what is the news going to contain? The rebooted news, what are we going to have in this segment of the of the series? Well, I'm going to, uh, one of the things I want to focus on is new products. There's so many new products coming from left, right and centre. I'd like to make sure that you know, if you watch the news, uh, what products are out there, what products are coming up, what is new, because there's nothing worse than going out saving all your money buying the product you've lusted after for a long time only to find that the next day the manufacturer has launched a new one and it's much better and it's cheaper so i'm going to try and keep you intimately in touch with what's going on what's new what's coming around the corner and to do that i would like suppliers retailers distributors manufacturers to email me here's the address email me with their latest product launch releases the, the notes tell us what you're doing tell us what you've got on the drawing board tell us what's coming up keep us informed so that i can keep you people informed, the people who watch this channel, that's going to be a major job of the weekly news. But there's other stuff too. As before, the weekly news will tell you what's coming up on RC Model Reviews. And this week, coming up this week, we've got, I've got my piece of paper because I'm still old and I still forget. It's getting worse actually. Um, what's coming up? OLEDs. OLED technology. Organic light emitting diodes. What, what is it? Well, an increasing amount of our smartphone technology, our large screen TV technology, and now video FPV glass technology is using OLEDs. OLEDs are different to LCDs. I'm going, I've done a video, I explain the difference between LCDs and OLEDs. The strengths of LCDs, the strength of OLEDs, the pros and cons of each, and how basically this technology works and what you can expect from it, because Fat Shark have launched their HDOs. Everybody's raving about them. They are, almost everyone that I've heard talk about them said, they are the best video glasses on the market. And I don't doubt it from the perspective of the optics and having those wonderfully bright, high contrast, sharp OLED displays, but, but there's one thing we've got to consider. I don't know. I've seen very little talk of it. OLED displays suffer from one problem. Not so much these days as they did in the early days, but they can suffer from one really important problem called burn-in. Burn-in. Now, here's a smartphone. This is just showing you what burn-in does. We have something on the screen, you know, icons or something that are there in the same place most of the time. Yeah, they can actually sort of get burnt into the screen. So if you're running FPV and you've got no SD around the edge, Will the OSD get burnt into your OLED glasses, into your HDOs? I don't know. I'm going to run you through the whole technology and I'm going to tell you why I think it probably won't be an issue, but it could be an issue. And we won't know for a year or so until these things have been in the field for some period of time. So, but you'll be forearmed. If I teach you all about OLED stuff, you'll know what the pros and cons are. So that's a video coming up this week. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's in the new format. So information rich not too long and hopefully you'll find it really really useful also this week i'm reviewing the jumper multi-protocol transmitter oh, i've already done that didn't i yes i reviewed the old one but i do have the new one and my biggest complaint with the old jumper transmitter was the sticks didn't center very well they were not repeatable they were pretty crappy but now they've got a version with hall effect sticks has that fixed the problem watch my video and you'll find out and i'm also surprisingly enough it has an oled screen so i'll also that'll be a great example to or great opportunity to demonstrate some of the strengths and weaknesses of oleds so stay tuned for that gripping stuff and the other big hot topic these days is long range fpv and everybody seems to be shifting to 900 megahertz or 868 megahertz with crossfire or whatever um why in fact is that the best option is crossfire the best option everyone seems to think it's great and generally it works pretty well but it's not always the best option. Neither is 2.4 the best option all the time, or 433. So I'm picking up the ball from the long range UHF reviews that I started some time ago. And I'm gonna do a, a, this week I'm looking at how to choose the right band for your RC gear. Because we have a lot of bands to choose from. Everything from 27 megahertz. Some countries have 35 and 40 megahertz. We've got 72 megahertz in some countries. Then you go up to your 433, you go up to your 868, 900. Um, what do we got after that? Uh, 2.4, and in fact there's other frequencies we could use for radio control use, which is the best frequency for you? Well, there are a lot of factors involved. I'm going to explain how you can choose, because depending on where you are, the type of environment you fly in, the number of people you fly with, the type of video transmitter gear you use, all of those things will have a bearing on which is the best band to use for your 
if radio control, even if you're not long range, even just line of sight. It, all of the factors that will affect which band is the best, which set of frequencies is the best, I will be discussing them. You can make your own informed decision. And it's not as easy as you might think. And then again, if you're flying long range, you'll need FPV because line of sight isn't long range. Now, that brings up the vexing question, how much FPV transmitter power do I need? How, you know, how much is enough? I've seen a lot of video gear coming onto the market recently boasting 800 milliwatts, one watt, one and a half watts of power on 5.8 gigahertz. Seriously, do we need that much? Well, I've done a little bit of a test. I've set up a test rig. I've got uh, a transmitter which does 25, 200, 4, 500 and 800 milliwatts. And I'm just I'm showing you the difference between the different power levels at different ranges. So you can determine for yourself how much is enough. Also, I'm looking at the effect that a good receiver antenna will have because I'm, I'm a believer of the school that we should be flying with the minimum power we need and the best antennas we can afford. That gives us the ability to fly below the radar. And that's important. Why is that important? Well, on the 11th of July, a, what was it? I wrote it down here, a um, House subcommittee discussion took place between members of the House and interested parties, which is like the, the drone industry and various other parties, talking about really important things like a revision of section 336. 366, which is it? 336, I think it is, in the USA. If you're in the USA, you know what that is. That's the special dispensation that lets you Americans fly your radio control models under the auspices of a community-based organization that gets you out of the regulatory tangle of framework that is the real aviation world. So it's really, really important, but there are now, there's now huge pressure coming from certain parties, including the FAA, to throw section 336 out the door, kick it out, throw it, you know, flush it. And that's not good. That's not good at all. So I put a link in the description of this video to a video stream of that discussion. You really want to have a look at it. It is shocking. You'll be shocked. It's quite long. It's two hours long or something. But, you know, I will, uh, in fact, watch my XJet channel. In the next day or so, I'll be putting a rant up about this because it's so important. It needs to be ranted about. But one of the key things that they raise is we've got people from the FAA and the, and the drone industry saying, oh, these drones are terrible. They have video trans or transmitters on board that can knock out the autopilot in a plane. Honestly, that's what they're saying. What are they talking about? Well, the FCC recently issued a big statement saying, we're going after these illegal FPV transmitters and the people who sell them. And they're trying to find Hobby King a huge amount of money for selling illegal video equipment. So if we're going to get away with FPV, we've got to make sure we're using power, the minimum power levels we can, which means flying under that radar. And so you need to know what's the minimum you can use. There's no point in putting a one and a half watt transmitter on your model if your antenna's crap and your setup's crap because the guy next to you with a 200 milliwatt transmitter might get three times as far. So I'm going to talk about how much power you need, show you some practical demonstrations, talk about the science on the whiteboard showing you how power affects range and how antenna gain affects range. And you'll know, you'll know the best way to set up your FPV system, whether it's for just flying nearby or for the longest flights you can manage. So that's it. That's the first weekly news of the reboot. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'd like your comments. Go to the comments section below. Tell us what you think. And also, if you've got questions, put them down there. In the middle of the week, I'll be doing a Q&A. I'll be answering any questions that people have put up. And watch out for a live stream. Make sure that if you are subscribed to this channel, you go to the bell, click the notifications, so that when I put a live stream up, you'll be advised in advance of the live stream. You can join in. You can ask questions. You can Ask whatever you like, and we'll do a live stream, get some more engagement with the community of the people out there. That's you, especially my Patreon supporters who are kindly paying the bills, which really helps. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. There'll be some more changes. This is um, early days. I've got some more lead-ins and outs to do on the, on the video stuff. So this is just the very first video, and the, you'll watch the, hopefully, the quality and the content improve over coming weeks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.